Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning to all. To all, uh, I guess it's getting closer to afternoon. Um, I hope everybody's uh, week has been going uh, real well. I wanted to make a video today about racism in uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, in my over 40 years associated with the Watchtower cult, I've seen numerous uh, incidents of, uh, if not outright bigotry and racism, um, at least uh, kind of a, a wink and a nod at uh, that type of behavior being uh, kind of just kind of overlooked a little bit. Not uh, not a whole lot done about it when uh, when it's been actually pretty blatant. Um, it's uh, it goes back to the beginnings of the Watchtower Society, I think, because I I was uh, when I was first coming out, um, I was doing research, and I think it was on uh, uh, Randy Waters' site. And uh, probably on JW Survey also, there were some Watchtower articles that were posted that talked about uh, how there was a certain black brother who slowly turned white. And the teachings uh, of Pastor Russell were that uh, uh, black people would turn white in the new system. Um, as far as I know, there's no biblical basis for believing in any kind of racial superiority, white supremacy, or uh, Latino supremacy, or uh, any other kind of supremacy. I think we're all pretty much God's children, and we come in a variety of uh, types. And uh, for uh, just for the sheer uh, diversity, I think. But uh, it doesn't really matter what's on the outside. It's what's on the inside. If you have a good heart and you're spirit filled and you're serving God, um, you could be green as far as I'm concerned and uh, you would be my brother or my sister. And, uh, you know, the Watchtower Society, uh, I mean, they're, it just, it just is so twisted in its views and it really does walk away from so much of what the Bible actually teaches. Um, some of the incidents of uh, racism that I've seen um, I can remember uh, I was associated with a Hispanic Spanish-speaking congregation um, in New Mexico, and there's a lot of Hispanics live there. And I remember the elders always uh, complaining. It was they were all Hispanic brothers, and they were always complaining uh, that the English Watchtower came out, say in January, and that particular issue didn't hit the Spanish language until June. So there was a six-month difference um, in printing and they were always saying things like well I guess the the Latinos are going to go into the new system uh, six months after the whites and they were getting that idea because they were never allowed to have a Hispanic or Spanish speaking well Spanish speaking uh, circuit overseers were fine but they could not be actually Hispanic circuit overseers overseeing a Hispanic congregation. They always had to be headed up by a white brother. Um, as far as uh, uh, interracial marriage, I've seen some interracial marriage and I think that's fine. I've never had a problem with it, but uh, there was always uh, in one particular congregation in, uh, in Sacramento there was always this uh, this pall of dread uh, every time this uh, one older sister walked in with her husband uh, who happened to be black 
and uh, I think the whole congregation would just kind of hush, you know, and I mean, maybe it was because she was about 50 and he was about 30, or maybe it was because uh, she was a white woman and he was a black man, but uh, I heard comments to the effect on both of those issues, and it seemed to me more that it was a black and white issue. Um, I think the Watchtower may be, with a lot of the things that are going on now, we're seeing a lot of changes go on in the Watchtower, and they've been trying to clean that part up from their history. And, um, and it can effectively be done if, if you go back to uh, the mid-1800s um, and compare Abraham Lincoln, uh, the greatly lionized president uh, that uh, freed the slaves. Um, back in those days, uh, he was a Republican, and his reason for um, engaging in the Civil War wasn't to free slaves. The idea was to keep the Union together. And he, uh, he broke the law several times, and um, although the southern states were well within their rights to secede from the Union, uh, he demonized them and criminalized them and went to war against them for it. And uh, freeing of the slaves was a byproduct of that war, the Civil War. Um, Lincoln's personal views were that uh, blacks were subhuman. They weren't even human. They were just a little bit below human beings. And his uh, agenda was actually to have them taken off, uh, off the North American continent and put them in uh, South America or in other, some other place away from here. And over the course of a, over 150 years or so, uh, he's lionized as this great man who was actually a bigot, but now he's this great man who freed the slaves. And uh, that history has been cleaned up. And uh, now I think it's, it's kind of uh, funny that the Democratic Party is the one that's always espousing the uh, let's not be bigots, let's, uh, let's love everybody. And it was the Republicans who are now being treated as if they are bigots. And... Uh, Back in when all that happened, it was the Republicans who were actually more towards uh, getting uh, slavery abolished. The Watchtower, I think, is doing the same kind of thing. They're trying to clean their history up, and they're uh, they're really uh, not going to really get it all cleaned up. But they're, I think they're getting a pretty good job of it done. Um, but as long as certain people remain in the positions they're in, and if they keep that attitude and are still as vocal about it, I mean, I can remember just as, as far back as 1990 or so, uh, my brother and I, we were Hispanic, uh, we were asked to help prepare food. Well, this might have even been around 88, I guess. It was late 80s, maybe early 90s. We were asked to help prepare food for his circuit assembly. And uh, there's this uh, one brother of uh, Japanese uh, ancestry who owned a chain of Mexican restaurants, kind of a fast food Mexican restaurant, kind of, kind of, kind of crummy food, by the way. But uh, he had uh, donated a lot of the uh, ingredients to make uh, tacos and stuff like that, burritos. And uh, so my brother and I were assigned to prepare the meat. Uh, and so they gave us these big paddles and these huge cauldrons. And we were, they're like a couple of old crone witches, you know, just stirring away, you know, and mixing this brew. And um, that asshole brother, we'll call him, uh, oh, we won't call him anything. He's just a jerk. Uh, 
he started laughing and uh, and he called over a couple of other elders who were supervising the food preparation and uh, he said check this out there's a couple of tacos making tacos <laughs> and I guess they thought that we couldn't hear him because I was going to take that big paddle and I was going to whack him across the head with it but instead I just dropped it on the floor and walked out my brother did the same thing and they were like oh wait, wait, we were just kidding we we're just kidding and, and I just turned around and I said you're an ass and I walked away and I was actually gonna just drive home you know but um, I went out to the car and I sat there for a while and I thought about it and I said what a bigot what a bigot and this is the guy that's uh, heading up his congregation he wasn't in, in charge of our congregation he was uh, and the one that shared the hall with us. And um, you know, see, these are the guys that are teaching equality among men and Christian love to, uh, and showing that face to the world. And then when we're doing him a favor, he's got the nerve to be a, a racist, bigoted ass. And um, I almost got my gun out of the glove box, and I was going to go shoot that dude. I was so pissed off. And uh, my dad came out, and uh, he said, I heard what happened. He said, just cool off. I said, just cool off. He said, Let's, you need to go for a ride. And uh, so we left the Yuba City Assembly Hall, and we drove over uh, towards Marysville. We sat down, and uh, we got a couple of... He got a coffee and I got a soda and we, we sat there and just talked. And uh, my dad always had a way of, of reaching me in my in my adult years. Anyway, me and him butted heads a lot when, when I was a kid. I was very rebellious and then very much a fecal cephalic, but um, he managed to settle me down and, uh, and I went back over there and uh, finished out the assembly. But it, it nagged at me, you know, that uh, that this guy was such a blatant bigot in front of... There, there was easily 40 people back there getting ready for food preparation, you know. And, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, there was another brother who actually used to play in the NFL. He was with uh, the Houston Oilers. And uh, I think he ended his career with uh, with the Raiders giant of a man um, he was six foot eight and about 400 pounds maybe a little more and uh, he didn't even have much of a spare tire most of that was muscle and, and bone you know he was a great big strong guy and uh, he was a ministerial servant and uh, he wanted to be an elder he was certainly old enough uh, he was raising a near adult daughter, um, very faithful man, very discreet, very uh, wise, very spiritual. And uh, he was held back because he was black. And uh, he was warning me, he said, uh, you're not the right color for this kingdom hall. He was, uh, you can only be an elder if you're a white guy around here. And I asked him why he put up with it, and he said, because, uh, because uh, it's God who rules in the kingdom of men, he said. And, um, I'm going to be where he wants me to be. And I said, and how do you feel about the racism? He goes, it's hypocritical, he said. And, uh, but he always used to tell me this anytime I had a doubt about the organization. He always said, Bless Jehovah's heart, all he has is imperfect men to deal with. And um, I kind of think of that now as a kind of a cop-out. You know, that, that, that guy, uh, he died of a heart attack in his home. Uh, and uh, it wasn't long uh, after he and I had, had that conversation. He actually passed away about uh, six or eight months after that. And um, I'm... It wouldn't surprise me if the stress that those brothers were putting on him and the insults that went on behind his back, if that didn't have something to do with it, because uh, he wasn't a very old man. He was only about 51 or 52, and, uh, and he wasn't a smoker. He wasn't a eater of unhealthy foods or anything. In fact, he was an athlete for a long time, so 
Um, it wouldn't surprise me if the stress didn't kill him. So, uh, I don't know, the witnesses seem to be trying to clean up their image. And I think it's incumbent upon us who have lived through so much of the uh, lies and abuse and everything that the Watchtower has been doing for over a hundred years. I think it is incumbent upon us to speak out and warn people and let them know uh, just exactly who they're dealing with. I believe really that uh, the governing body is just a, a group of men. Uh, they're meat suits uh, for demons. I think these men are possessed. Uh, by unclean spirits and they are uh, expressing demonic expressions and uh, I just hope and pray that uh, JW's wake up and get out of that organization and find Christ anyway I'll go ahead and close out this video with uh, with a blessing uh, I speak uh, Psalm 91 over your lives. I speak uh, Yeshua's Shalom over your lives. I wish you peace and love and God's protection and Holy Spirit guidance. And uh, we'll talk again soon. Take care.